I'm Johnny, and it's time for rumination. First of all, a little bit of an apology. This video is coming out a little bit late. I had recorded something last night, but it was like seven minutes long after editing, and it was really boring. <laughs> so just no. Today, we're going to talk about one of the least sexy things about your studio. We're not talking about fat ass analog synths. We're not talking about sexy controllers. We're not even talking about the chair you're sitting on. We're going to talk about your room. Before I really get started, we have to do a quick review. We're going to be talking about how the sounds reflect off the walls in your room and how much of an effect that has on what you hear. Here's a hint. It's kind of big. So there's three major tools that we're going to need to at least get you to a point where you can accurately judge what your room is doing and how you can make it better. Number one, pink noise. So pink noise is noise that has an equal frequency distribution across all of the octaves, which is a fancy way of saying that to the human ear, it sounds like all the frequencies are represented. Because of the way the ear works, it's not really the case. It's actually white noise, blah, blah, blah. But pink noise sounds like it's got all the frequencies. You're going to need a spectrum analyzer. That's the thing that grabs frequencies across the x-axis and amplitude across the y-axis. So what happens when you graph pink noise is that you get this nice slope. Now, the trick to measuring your room and seeing what's going on with the sound waves in your room, you play pink noise out of the speakers, and then you have that going into your measurement mic, and you compare the two graphs. And you really gotta look, look at, at this, this graph. graph. So you might be asking yourself though, well, what's going on with the sound in the room? See, the thing is, is that every room has its own particular character, and in a lot of cases, what's going to happen is that a sound wave is going to leave the speakers and it's going to reflect off of a wall and then it's going to come back and hit your ear. And it's that process of hitting the wall and coming back into your ear where really nasty things can happen to your sound. Things like some frequencies will get canceled and other frequencies will get boosted. And when you're trying to make accurate decisions when it comes to mixing, mastering, and even creating music, and you have a situation where your room is coloring your sound, it's a lot like trying to paint an accurate picture wearing Elton John glasses. The sound of my studio I thought was good, but after listening to my mixes in a couple of different places, it wasn't great. So when I wired up the measurement mic and I started testing the sound, boy, what a telling surprise I got. Here's the thing though. For the first couple of days of messing around with this thing, I was really just kind of baffled and confused, but I didn't know what to do with it afterwards. And I tried changing things around, but it wasn't changing the shape of the graph. It wasn't affecting the sound, but I finally found something of a process that works, and I'm going to share that with you today, is remove things from the equation, okay? So don't try to measure both speakers. Choose the right channel only. The next thing is do at least a little bit of research and get an understanding of what could be causing the problems. I found that my desk was too close to the wall. And once I moved it out from the wall by five inches, things improved dramatically. So the real key thing here is be methodical. Make a measurement. I just screen captured the output of the spectrum analyzer. Change a thing and then make another measurement and then change a thing. Do some looking to see if what you're changing is having an effect. And if it does, keep changing and measuring that. Don't do an in-depth analysis yet. Get a whole bunch of results together. And after you've gotten together five or six or 10 or 12 different results, then go back and then see where the best placement is. So for instance, I ended up moving my desk three inches from the wall, five inches from the wall, eight inches from the wall, and a foot from the wall. And what I found was that five inches is the magic number, <laughs> well, at least as far as desks are concerned. I mean, really, let's be honest. Now, the cool thing is, is that, okay, I've done all this stuff and I haven't even started looking at sound treatment. For instance, I have an entire ceiling that's reflecting sound everywhere, but I'm already in a much better place and I haven't dropped a dollar 
Now when it comes time to actually do that level of sound treatment, I'm also in a better position to judge what effect it has and how to best treat my room. It's crazy how much of an effect this has. After setting up my speakers the right way, I was better able to hear when my music got distorted. All of a sudden, all those bass notes that were missing were there clear as day. It was unreal. This is one of those crazy home studio secrets that a lot of beginners completely miss out on because it's not sexy. And it sounds really complicated, but I'm here to tell you it's not. All it takes is a decent microphone and just some exploration. So just go out and do it. It's actually kind of fun. And remember, kids, acoustics is fun.